Reporting for Kids First. Today, I'm here with Chicago-based writer, co-executive producer, production designer, and co-host of National Geographic's show, Weird But True, Charlie Engelman, and the Brooklyn-based co-host and producer of Weird But True, Carly Shiraki. Weird But True debuts its third season on Disney Plus Friday, August 14th, 2020. It's so great to be here with you guys today. I cannot wait to see the new season. How are you? I'm doing great. And that was hands down the greatest intro to any interview we've been part of for this show. So well done, Catherine. That was out of this world. Thank you. <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you for that. All right. So Charlie, we're going to start with you. Yes. So I've been reading the Weird But True book since I was very, very little. And yeah. I've always loved them. I've big collection on my little bookcase thing and many of the facts are very fascinating but very very weird and almost too weird to be true yes. so my friends and I sometimes we'd look through the books and we would be like well can this be true so yeah. have you ever questioned any of those facts yourself a hundred percent those are those are sometimes the the best facts to learn about I think when we write the show we're putting together it's almost like when you're researching something online and you spot that one thing and you're just like, that has to be a lie. Or I can't believe that that is, that actually exists. Those are the things that we definitely put in the show. And we try to kind of explain exactly how they work. So you understand them a bit better, but um, definitely the ones that shock you or that really jump out at you are um, the fun ones to learn about for sure. Definitely. And I've always been like, wait, so one of the facts I remember most vividly of being like, that can't be true, but I mean, it must because it's in weird but true, but yeah. uh, it's the moon. Researchers say that the moon might be squishy inside. I'm like, what? what? The moon is squishy? I mean, uh, I don't what know. else? We have uh, scorpions glow in the dark. Uh, what else? You could, you could cook an entire Thanksgiving dinner in the dishwasher. I mean, it's, it's just Wait, what? out of the show. Yeah, weird but true. There you go. Okay, well, that's very interesting. It's very odd. We explain yeah, it on the show. Definitely. And so for season three, you have a new and wildly talented co-host, Carly Shiraki. And you and Carly come from very different backgrounds. So how'd you get to know each other? Were you already fans of each other's work before the show or what? Well, I met Carly when we were looking for a new co-host for the show. And we had a lot of resumes. People sent us a lot of videos of people who could kind of work and fit well. And I think Carly has done a lot of television work in the past. And she's the type of person where you see her on television and you're just like, wow, this person is so expressive. She's so fun. She's so excitable. She would be the perfect fit for the show. And I think we do come from different backgrounds. I come from a scientific background. Carly comes from a more of a performing background, but we both have kind of a shared enthusiasm for goofing around, having a fun time and learning new things. So it's kind of really fun when we're on the show. It's like having a friend that's really good at the things that you're not good at. <laughs> so that <laughs> when you're in the field and you're talking to someone or you have to do an activity and I'm like, oh man, I know I'm not going to do this well. I'm pretty sure Carly is going to do it well. So we kind of balance each other out and boost each other up on the show, which is really fun. Yes, that's so great. And I remember, Carly, you did Sunny Side Up. And I remember, I was like, oh my God, I watched that show. <laughs> 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 I was like, oh my god, <laughs> I watched that show. I was just like, whoa, okay, that's cool. <laughs> so I was like, oh. um. <laughs> That makes me so happy to hear. That show was so much fun to do. It was an absolute roller coaster every day because it was live. Um, yeah. But this show is actually weirdly similar the way like sunny side up was so many different things it was like sometimes we were making crafts sometimes we were dressing up in costumes sometimes we were learning about something new the show is actually that also it's just like a supercharged like you know a, a older kid version of that which is really yeah. cool. yeah and i might add as you know from sunny side up my co-host was a chicken puppet named chica let me tell you working with a real human being was really cool Go i could just look into charlie's eyeballs yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I guess it would be nice to actually work with a real person other than a uh, little chicken, but hey, Chica was cute. Chica was cute. <laughs> oh, Chica, look, Chica's hilarious. In fact, that would be a, a dream collaboration. Carly, Chica, and Charlie. Oh my gosh, mm. crossover. Crossover episode. Yeah, crossover. Season four. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so as a University of Michigan senior and nature filmmaker, you beat out more than 700 competitors to win National Geographic Channel's expedition granted content and an award of $50,000 to fund an expedition to the forest across the U.S. At age 21, that launched your career into producing nature series. Yes. So, yeah, and so that is a sort of dream come true scenario. So yeah. what advice... Yeah, what advice do you have for any kids hankering to launch a career in television? Oof, you know, I don't know. I think there are two, there are two ways to do it, if uh, I'm being honest. I think the one way to do it is to kind of um, get a job at a television station, or if you want to be a writer, try to get a production assistant job or something like that. There's the very structured way to do it. Or, I mean, the thing is that I think television is the dream for a lot of people, but there are so many other things like you can make videos on Instagram or you can make videos on YouTube or even like TikTok now. And um, all you really need is a, a phone and uh, a desire to do something creative. So really, I think it used to be that you needed a bunch of stuff in order to get started, but now you just got to start doing it. So I think if you really love television, if you really love making stuff, there's nothing really stopping you from creating things. So just go start doing it and put your stuff out in the world. Yeah, and that's, I guess, that's definitely what I guess you kind of started to do, definitely. And so your, your shows reach across the kids across the globe. So how do you determine content for the show in terms of international appeal? International appeal. Gosh, you, Catherine, you have the greatest questions. You're, you're putting us through the ringer here. I hope I sound as smart as you do in this interview. <laughs> How do we choose topics for international appeal? I think we choose topics in two different ways. One uh, type of topic is we love doing kind of seemingly ordinary topics like cooking or something like that and try to expose all the weird, crazy stuff about it. Like the fact that you can cook meals in dishwashers and by burying them underground and stuff. Or we like doing topics that are really kind of extreme like scuba diving or solar systems where we can go on a NASA habitat on a volcano in Hawaii and sequester ourselves there for a day. So do something really weird. But I think and when thinking about the international appeal, I think Carly and I try to remember that um, stuff that might be weird to us might not be weird to other people halfway across the world. So when you're labeling things as weird or not weird, um, you just got to be really careful. Like weird doesn't mean disgusting or weird doesn't mean gross. Weird more in the sense of our show is kind of like, oh, surprising and stuff that we didn't know. So we're trying to kind of share different cultural information and the stuff that is mostly weird we try to make sure it's the information parts so we're not kind of we don't want to make fun of everybody anybody or anything like that on the show yeah and i definitely i got to a sneak peek at the show and i definitely saw i got i think i saw like three episodes but i saw the solar system one and i remember the intro is like there are as many stars as there are grain or there are more stars than there are grains of sand on the earth and i was like what yeah. That's right? insane. What? It's crazy. Right off the bat, we hit you with a good one. <laughs> yes, definitely. So I have one more question for you, Charlie, before we switch over to Carly. So as the head writer, art director, executive producer, and talent for Weird But True, you wear a lot of different hats, literally and metaphorically. Yes. Uh, so how does this play out? Is it ever challenging <laughs> to switch from one to another? I think so, definitely. I mean, I have a ton of help on the show in all of those departments, a bunch of really talented people who are helping me out. So um, that makes it a lot easier. And also, I think it's really great to have somebody like Carly, who is such a great co-host and talent, where if I have to go and I have to address some art stuff and she has to work on kind of prepping a guest or prepping an expert, she's really great at that. So I think it's the fact that you have like a whole team behind you to help you out is a really huge help. But there are some days where I'm working for about like 19 hours a day and running from one thing to another and having a writer's meeting and an art meeting and then having to host something in the studio. It gets really crazy. And I take like very professional meetings wearing like felt mustaches and costumes just because I have to because of everything that's going on. So a lot of the times they cross over. Well, I guess it does sound like it'd be pretty busy doing everything. Yeah, so, it is. Quite yeah, a lot. it is. So, Carly, I'm going to switch over to you now. So, you've done many, many different things like theater, DJing, crafting, hosting, and voiceovers. So, where do you find yourself having the most fun, and which prepared you most for the show? 
Oh, oh my goodness. I mean, I have fun doing all of it, to be honest. That's like sort of, that's the way I would answer the question earlier about how do you like seek out a career in television? I think you just follow the things you love. So um, I love... I love getting to help people have a good time, um, whether that good time involves dancing to, uh, you know, the high school musical soundtrack when I was a DJ for Radio Disney or whether or whether the good time, which was, that was fun, or whether the good time is uh, showing kids all the ways they can explore their curiosity on this show. Um, so I, I feel really really grateful to be able to do so many things. Um, I actually think that's something Charlie and I have in common is that we both, um, kind of like to run around wearing a lot of different hats, doing a bunch of different things, keeping busy. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. It's all good fun stuff. Yeah. And speaking of kids, you were telling how you, you know, like, like helping kids have fun. And so why do you think your career is gravitated towards children's content? So what do you love most about educating children? So I'm, I'm the oldest of seven kids. And when I was growing up, I was always, you know, having so many brothers and sisters is kind of like having a little theater company in your household. So I would always be like, everybody, we're making a play. Here are your roles. I'll see you in the basement in 10 minutes. Please don't be late. Um, <laughs> but it, in all seriousness, one of my favorite things to do we had this video from when i was eight years old i'm in the basement hosting an episode of this tv show called where in the world is carmen san diego which was this geography game show that was on tv when i was, and i i just it's so funny to look back at that now and be like i was eight years old playing out things i was seeing on tv and now that's what i'm doing with my whole life and i think um i I love the idea of making stuff for kids because the stuff you watch and read when you're a kid impacts your whole life. Whether you're copying the host of a TV show or whether you see a doctor on TV and you know a kid that watches Doc McStuffins is at home uh, with her animal hospital <laughs> and she's gonna grow up to be a doctor. It's um, really interesting to me, and especially with Weird But True, we're showing kids so many examples of all the things they can do and be. And um, I, I, that's my favorite thing about working with kids. Definitely. And I guess, yeah, I guess a little bit like a little bit of influence on TV or whatever they watch will go a long way in their life. Yeah. So I know that you probably get asked this question a lot, but what is your favorite weird but true fact? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, what is my favorite weird but true fact? I mean, I have, there, there are a lot. One of them I usually say is the, um, is, is that I'm the oldest of seven kids because people are like, what? Um, and then another weird but true fact about me is that my family has a shroom farm. Um, that's our, our family business, and it's what all of the uh, Italian immigrants in the area where I grew up in, um, when, when folks came over to the U.S., they were, there were a lot of mushroom farmers in my uh, community. So I know a lot about mushrooms, which is cool because in season three, we go to a mushroom farm and talk to a mushroom farmer. And I was like, wow, my guy, beautiful. I know you. <laughs> my guy. <laughs> 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 well it's thank you so much it's been so great talking with you i had a blast we go Catherine. You. best interview we've this had so, so far fun. best oh, one hands you. down thank you so much <laughs> this is Catherine reporting for kids first please remember to like and subscribe to our channel and check out all of our reviews and interviews and don't forget to watch the new season of weird but true on disney plus see you later bye